Professor Diaz here, and in this video, I'm going to go into depth on how to calculate opportunity cost, especially when the numbers are not obvious. Um, after you can calculate opportunity cost, you can easily determine uh, who has a comparative um, advantage if we're talking about two different countries. So let's say that we're talking about uh, the USA here. And let's say this is their production possibilities frontier. Now it's straight, which means it's a linear um, relationship. They can produce six apples or five oranges or something uh, in between, right? And the way I like to think of this is by saying apples per orange or oranges per apple. And the, the way I get to this is thinking about um, something more common to me, like miles per hour. We're always, we're all familiar with miles per hour. If I say that I travel a um, uh, hundred miles and it takes me two hours, then I can figure out how fast I'm going, which we call miles per hour. Now per always means divided by in mathematics. So if I travel a hundred miles per hour and it takes me two hours, how fast am I going? Okay, you should all probably be able to do that in your head and know that it's 50 miles per hour, right? However, how is that actually calculated mathematically? The way it's calculated mathematically is by taking the miles per or divided by hour. And so we can take 100 miles and divide that by two hours. And remember, this means per. So now we have 100 divided by two is 50. And then we keep the M and the divided by means per and the hours miles per hour, 50 miles per hour. So what you were all able to do in your head here is actually done mathematically with these terms, 50 miles per hour. Now, that's really saying we travel 50 miles per one hour, right? And that way, that's why we can say in two hours, we'll travel 100 miles, right? So this is the basic, uh, same basic concept is what we're going to do here for calculating apples per one orange or oranges per one apple. Really, when we're calculating opportunity cost, we're saying if we want to move over one orange, how far down in terms of apples are we going to need to go? What's our uh, apples per one orange, right? And so to figure this out, and because this is a, a line, a straight line, we can just say, well, um, what's the opportunity cost of producing one orange? So I'm going to write that up here. So that's we keep in our mind, that's what we're trying to calculate, okay? What is the OP, opportunity cost, uh, uh, OC, <laughs> excuse me, opportunity cost of producing one O, one orange, okay? One orange. What is the opportunity cost of producing one O? So how many apples have to go down for oranges to go over one time, okay? That's what we're figuring out. So we want to figure out apples per orange. And I'm saying this is similar to miles per hour, right? Just to, to show you where I'm coming from. Apples per one orange. So we have six apples here, six apples per, which is divided by five oranges, five oranges equals six divided by five equals 1.2. 1.2. So this means now we have 1.2, and this was apples and this was oranges, right? Apples per orange, okay? 1.2 apples per orange. This means the opportunity cost. If we want to go over one orange, we're going to have to come down 1.2 apples. Go over one, we come down 1.2, right? Conversely, if we want to figure out oranges per apple, we can say 
five oranges per six apples. Convert that, five divided by six equals 0.83, so 0 0.83, and that's oranges per apple, which means the opportunity cost of producing one apple is 0.83 oranges. Okay, this is how you calculate the opportunity cost. Now, whoever has the lowest opportunity cost, if we're comparing two countries to find out comparative advantage, whoever has the lowest opportunity cost has the uh, comparative advantage, right? Whoever it costs more uh, has a disadvantage, but whoever it costs less has a comparative. So in this case, um, you know, we, we know that to produce one apple, it costs us 0.83 oranges. If there's another country and for them to produce one apple, it costs two or, uh, if for them to produce one orange, it costs two apples. Um, excuse me, for them, for them to produce one apple, it costs two oranges, then the USA would have a comparative advantage in that case. So let's do one more example in this video. I'm just going to change the numbers up here. And let's say, let's make it, uh, let's put a seven up here and go to the three. Okay. So in this situation, um, I'm, the question might be, let's say the question is what, make a smaller font here, what, is the USA's opportunity cost to produce one apple? Okay, that's the question. So we wanna know how many oranges per one apple. So we wanna know oranges per one apple. And so we can take this and say, well, three, right? Three oranges per seven apples. Three oranges per seven apples equals three divided by seven. Three divided by seven equals 0.42. Uh, round up to 0.43. So 0 0.43, and this is oranges per apple, right? So oranges per apple, which means what is, again, what was the question? What is the USA's opportunity cost to produce one apple? Well, now we have the per one apple, right? So what's the opportunity cost to produce one apple? 0.43 oranges, okay? This makes sense when you look at the curve, because really, let's say, let's just kind of graph it out and see. You don't really need the graph if you're doing the exam or trying to do something quickly, but we can use the graph to see if this makes sense. Let's say we're producing right here at uh, three apples, and we'll draw that down to about two oranges, and we want to slide that up to four apples, okay? The question is, how far down in oranges do we have to go? Not that far. This distance is how far down we have to go in oranges. Now, that should be mathematically here, point four three. Okay, so to go up one apple here, we have to go down 0.43 oranges. This is the math of calculating opportunity cost. Um, if you can calculate opportunity cost, then you can easily calculate uh, who has a comparative advantage in different situations.